Welcome back to Eyewitness News at noon. I'm meteorologist Danny Beckstrom. After a significant flooding last night, what a relief it is that the radar has been dry for most of the day, but it won't be the case heading into this evening. We're not in the clear yet. Right now, we're seeing a mix of sun and clouds with temperatures in the upper 70s, low 80s, and conditions that are quite humid. So much moisture to work with in the atmosphere. Cold front is on the way, and that's going to leave behind beautiful conditions starting tomorrow through the weekend. But for tonight, the return of scattered showers and storms, which is not what you want to hear after so many communities are still trying to clean up from the significant flooding last night. Starting to see a few of these spotty showers develop for our northern suburbs here. Plenty more where that came from as the radar lights up this evening. I think by the three or four, we are going to see that action. And the showers and storms that develop have the potential to drop locally heavy rain and produce damaging wind gusts. So we are looking at a threat for strong to severe thunderstorms. Some of that could exacerbate the flooding situation. But showers should move out as we move into tomorrow. So better weather is just ahead. We've got to keep a close eye on the thunderstorm threat tonight, just given the flooding issues. Yes, we still have the potential for flooding in the forecast tonight. By tomorrow morning, we're moving on. Drier air moves in, and that leaves us with beautiful conditions. We're talking sunny skies and low humidity starting tomorrow afternoon through Sunday. I'll have the hour by hour for tonight's storm chances coming up. David and Sandra. All right, thank you, Danny. We've shown you video from Connecticut and New York with the rain also causing problems in New Jersey. Places like Hoboken and Edgewater getting their own doses of flooding last night. Now, with more odd conditions in New Jersey, I would just News reporter Crystal Cranmore reports from Patterson. While much of the water has receded, parts of Patterson and other areas in New Jersey look like the Passaic River roads underwater. The rain turned streets into rivers, leaving drivers with nowhere to go. Cars out here were floating around, so pretty bad. You see all the garbage left over. Aldo Sedino lives at 11th Avenue and East 25th Street in Patterson, where floodwaters left him with a potentially hefty repair bill. My car got damaged inside my garage, so, um, I mean, I just got to see what I do now. High water swallowed up cars in other parts of the state. You can swim, bro? You can swim? Ah, worst case scenario. The Garden State Parkway was shut down in both directions at the Renshaw Street overpass. Several vehicles can be seen stalled, including a New Jersey State Trooper vehicle. A similar situation in Edgewater, where waters rose as folks were on the road. Many choosing to keep going as they drove through the wet mess, their cars half covered in water. And in Jersey City, New Jersey, part of this residential community found itself underwater. Back in Patterson, much of the water has receded, but the storm left quite the splash on residents not used to flooding. The flooding I've never really heard of. The, I called the landlord. He said that he never heard of it flooding, but this is the first time that I've seen it for the first year. Now that it's daylight, officials can get a clearer look of any potential damage. There could be debris scattered all over the roadways. Something to consider as commuters hit the roads. In Patterson, Crystal Cranmore, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, take a look at what the storms did to Metro North train tracks in Connecticut. These photos show damage in Seymour on the Waterbury branch. Service is suspended now in both directions, as well as on the Danbury branch. Yeah, so the question now, when will this get repaired and what delays can commuters expect? Joining